the advantages men 30 years of age and older will always have over younger men. Blessings to you all. I hope that you're feeling blessed and highly favored on today. Um, starting off, I can remember it. And, you know, just to kind of go ahead and, you know, preface everything that I'm about to say. Um, I was born on December 22nd of 1989. And so, um, yeah, I've seen quite a bit. You know, I know a lot of folks get on here and they think I'm like 24, 25, something like that. But now I'm, uh, I'm the seasoned age of 32. You know, I just like to take care of myself, you know, um, drink that good water. I put a lot of good things to my body, you feel me? So we try to keep everything looking good. You dig well on into old age. And then I was just blessed with good genetics as well. But I can recall a time, it wasn't, well, really, it wasn't until I want to say about ninth or 10th grade to where cell phones kind of became prominent. Eighth grade, maybe. I remember that's when the razor dropped. Everybody kind of had one, but that was only if you were privileged. But a lot of folks from, you know, from my caliber, phones were, they weren't, still weren't prevalent at that time. Um, so oftentimes you would have to borrow a phone from somebody. And I can remember the first, the first phone I ever had was a track phone, you know, with minutes on it and whatnot. So, and then from there, we went on to cricket. Once that cricket dropped, I think you could get unlimited everything for like $30 a month, or 30, like, probably like $40 a month, you know, everything, they had it busting, so, I remember I had the little Bluetooth headset, you know what I mean, I thought I was blanking back then, but, um, you know, that's neither here nor there, well, prior to that, um, I came up in an age to where you would actually have to call on a house phone, you know, and if you was popping, you had another line, like they had, they would have two different lines in the house, but I didn't really have that. And so it'd be kind of 50-50. Sometimes you would call, and or the majority of the time you would call, and you would have to speak to somebody else in the household. You would have to deal with eavesdropping, a whole lot of, a, a whole number of things, you know. But uh, it was really a crazy time. And if you can't recall this, I know you're probably gonna laugh at this because you can remember that, you know, just having to call and, you know, uh, yes, can I speak to such and such, kind of put your best. You have to kind of put a presentation on via telephone, you know, so it was really something. And, uh, but I can recall my daddy used to laugh me out for the longest, but I was kind of bred to be who I am, you know. My story is a bit different from most individuals, but back in elementary school, I want to say second, first or second, it was second grade. I had two girlfriends, you know, and I still remember their names, but I ain't gonna say them, no, you feel me? Because they probably grown up, married and whatnot. But my daddy laughed because I remember, you know, I just knew it was the player thing to do, so I just wanted to be on the phone with a shorty. So I remember calling, but, you know, in my inexperienced mind, I'm thinking I'm doing something just by talking to him. My daddy used to laugh me out because he used to tell everybody this story. The conversation would only be like two sentences. So I was so nervous. I, Hello, is such and such there? Yeah, hold on. You know, say her daddy go give her the phone and that. It did. We, the whole conversation was, hey, what you doing? Oh, okay. Well, I was just calling to say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> You know, it'll be like two, it'll be like two or three sentences, nothing major. At that point, obviously, I didn't know how to, you know, carry a full-fledged conversation with a woman. But it grew from there. It, it started a seed or planted a seed rather inside of me. And from that point on, as I began to grow up in age and, you know, uh, having to speak more and more all throughout middle school and uh, going in even into the high school days, but you know, like I said, around that time, I eventually women eventually started having cell phones. But what happened was, and I I found out that I was more adept at it than most individuals. Um, just being able to carry that conversation, you know, I've always been blessed with you know the gift of gab and the, the ability to speak, and I'm real good at it on the spot. You know, when I sit down here, it's it's an even mix sometimes. On some messages, I may, you know, kind of put my thoughts down on paper. But in a lot of the cases in the videos that you'll see, I'm just coming on here kicking it straight forward and, you know, recalling a lot of things or reciting a lot of things based off of memory. But it's just something about it. Like, I can probably relate it to 
a performer yeah. if you are nervous or anything like that. But as soon as I'm placed on the spot, as soon as a woman is in front of me or as soon as I have to speak in front of people, instantly the word, the right words come to my mind. Almost like clockwork, you know, the right things to say it comes out to where it's just eloquent and fluent. I don't have to force it. I'm not up there stumbling and mumbling and fumbling all through things. It's really just a gift. And so it's really kind of a separator in that particular regard. And I noticed it back in high school because, um, you know, a lot of the women that I was talking to, that was really my thing. You know, I've kind of played every area of the game, you know, so to speak. So I know how to kind of captivate the mind of a woman even if she doesn't see me as popping like you know oftentimes in high school women's minds are, are fixated upon athletes or you know the d boys or whatever may have you whatever type of little lane that she in you know being relevant anybody who's relevant those are going to be the ones that are captivating the minds of the women so in return they really don't have to do a whole lot much like the men of today um the millen well I'm not sure if they're millennials or not, but um, anyone born after that, like in their early 20s, things of this effect, they all came up in the age of communication. They've all came up with cell phones, with uh, devices to where they have always been able to talk online to where they didn't have to really do anything in person. And so that brings me to my main point on today for the older gentlemen or to the ones that the, the more seasoned gentlemen the one that's 30 years or older now it doesn't go across the board for everyone but we come from a time to where if you didn't hunt you didn't eat you know and parts of me at times i wish desperately that we could go back to that but i know that it'll never be that way again and so oftentimes i'm seeing it all always starts with the men and with men lacking the ability to communicate, it has kind of trickled down to the women to where oftentimes they're just lost on the phone. They claim that they want somebody who they can speak to and communicate effectively with, but yeah, they they fail at it terribly. They really don't have much to talk about at all, really don't have anything on their, on their minds. Um, and oftentimes it leaves me wondering, how are, how are interpersonal relationships being being formulated between two individuals. I mean, is it just, I mean, are y'all just sitting there looking at each other or, I mean, watching movies? Like, what are, what are y'all doing? Like, how does a relationship become kindled if both parties aren't able to talk? You know, if they don't have the ability to um, generate a conversation or to elaborate on different topics, what are y'all talking about? You know, oftentimes it's just like weirdos on weirdos. Just, you know, you know I think that is one of the main a catalyst as to the reduction in meaningful relationships nowadays. Um, obviously, you don't see as many individuals having a desire to get married or even to do, uh, build the family structure. Um, and I think that's, you know, that has a big part to do with it. Now, granted, beauty is in abundance. We're in a, what I would consider to be a microwavable society to where everything is kind of moving so fast. And with beauty in abundance, it's almost just you know, take it and go. You know, women like they pulling up and, you know, I know this was definitely, it's always been going down, you know, as far as one night stands and this, that, and the third, but it's almost like if sex literally means nothing, good sex almost, it serves its purpose, but you can kind of get that anywhere, I feel like, or, you know, you can get, you know, every man is like their calling card is to just be nasty and, you know, do all this type of little weird stuff to shawties and suck on toes and eat booty and stuff. But, you know, I mean, everybody kind of can rehearse the same game. You can study, you can look online and see individuals that you like or that you're fixated with or dang, I like how he said that or dang, you know, I like how his mannerisms were when, he, you know, he said this. So you can just be a tape recorder and say the right things but really it has no substance. If you were, if she was to kind of pinpoint in on you and kind of ask you what you mean by that or to elaborate a bit more on that, they would be lost for words. So we see more and more men of today's times just having, knowing the right words to say or the right movements or mannerisms, but they don't really have the substance to back that up. And so what I came here to tell all of the gentlemen 30 years and older on today 
uh, don't be dismayed. You know, if um, you know, for one, you you definitely need to be looking right. You definitely need to be eating. Um, you know, the correct things. You need to be working out, reading, sharpening your mind mentally. So when you do come across a younger woman, or you come across even a woman of your age, because hey, women in their thirties and forties are still looking beautiful nowadays. You know, um, but. If um, once you do come across this, this is one thing, this is the area that you can establish value in yourself that the younger man cannot. While he may have, not on me, but on y'all, on some of y'all out here, if you're saying, well, dang, I'm not getting a lot of looks when I go out. If, you know, <clears throat> um, you know, women, I'm not catching the eye of women. I don't have as many opportunities as I used to have. When you do come across your opportunities, because I have other videos that can show you how to actually get your attempts and get your get your numbers up, you know, as far as with your ability to be in the face of a woman and the attempts that you actually have in speaking with a woman or even getting close to building a personal relationship with one. Um, when you do get those opportunities, it's up to you to go ahead and lock in on that thing and really show us something that she really hasn't seen before, you know, and if you can really tap into that, you're going to be able to show this something and show this woman something rather that's extremely rare and anything that's rare is always going to be appealing. I hope you know that. So if you do have that ability to go ahead and communicate with her and actually this gives you an opportunity to actually serve, you got so much going for you in this particular regard because you can actually serve as a father figure oftentimes because a lot of women are raised without fathers. So if you can come in and you can actually weed through a lot of the mumbo jumbo and you can actually show her how to communicate effectively and tap in with that mindset you know and really just get her locked in with you and take her on a mental safari you know as i heard one young brother put it so eloquently you know um if you can actually do this then i think you'll be surprised at the results that you receive and so the main takeaways from today um you should be able to communicate much, much more efficiently and effectively than that of the younger gentleman because he's born in a time to where their main source of communication is online, typing on a keyboard. You know, some of these people, I'm so scared for this next gen for this upcoming generation because it's like, damn, they're not going to have any interpersonal skills. Everything I feel like is going to be on, well, I don't think, I know they're prepping for the metaverse and things to this effect. So, um, but for those who are still in real life with it, there's always going to be that niche area so that you can go ahead and, you know, assert yourself and assert your dominance. And so I just wanted to drop that jewel out to everybody out there in case you didn't know. But, you know, this one was for you. And shouts out to all my brothers out there, all the gentlemen out there that's doing their thing, you know. Uh, blessings to you. And, you know, with that, definitely feel free to uh, comment. I implore you to like, subscribe definitely hit the like button if you made it to this point in the video hit that like button share subscribe you know because plenty of more content plenty of more jewels in my mind where this came from so i think you're gonna love the content here on this channel but you know until next time certainly be blessed